Hello and welcome to section 2 of Getting Started with Azure Functions by Paul Oliver. Azure Functions supports many languages, all with their different strengths. This section will cover all the major languages along with some other ones that may be useful for your project. In this section, we're going to take a look at using JavaScript in Azure Functions using C Sharp or F Sharp or maybe even some scripting languages like Python or PHP. And then finally, we'll talk about the other languages supported by Azure Functions. In our first video in this section, we're going to talk about JavaScript. You may know some JavaScript because of web programming, but you're not sure how you might want to use it inside of Azure Functions. In this video, we're going to take a look at creating a JavaScript Azure function. Then we'll create local functions in the same file and show you how to call them. Then we'll add additional JavaScript library files to your function for you to use code reuse or to put your code in the library. And then we'll add NPM packages for you to use in your Azure function. Go to your Azure portal. And when you're there, click on the new button here in the corner. And then here in the search box, you can type in function app and then hit enter. And then just choose function app from the listing. And then down at the bottom, you'll see a blue create button. Go ahead and click that. Again, we need a unique name for our app name. Uh, so this time we're gonna do second function app and then put your first initial last name. So I'm gonna do Pauliver. And then for subscription, that looks good. Resource group, I'm gonna call it section, second function app resource group. Choose a region close to me for the hosting plan and then uh, storage account, I'm gonna give it something unique and make sure it's lowercase letters, click create. So to spare you waiting for this, I'm going to fast forward this a bit, but you do need to wait about 30 seconds or so for it to provision your function app. Just go to your resources and hit refresh. You'll get a notification in the top right corner. There it is. And then you can see it also in the listing below. It seems that our function is now created. I'm going to go into full screen just so you can see better what's uh, going on. And I'm going to choose our function app here that we created. And as it opens, you get presented with the scenarios and languages that we've seen before. I just want to show you there's another option, create your own custom function. You can also click down here. And when I click on it, you're going to get a variety of languages and scenario templates that you don't have on that first screen. Let's come down here and we're going to choose JavaScript. And on the core scenario uh, listing, you're going to see manual trigger JavaScript. Let's choose this and let's name it. The default name is fine. And then I'm going to click create. And in here we get a basic function. And if we look at this, there isn't much to it. It's just logging something that comes in on the input. And then it kills the context with context that done. I'm going to click uh, run and the logs open up. And then we can see that JavaScript manually triggered this function call with input test value. And this input is coming from our test values over here so I can say something like packed video and then hit uh, run here and you'll see that this log message will will show the new input so this is cool but let's really push this here I mean this is node.js so we have a lot of functionality that we can import first I'd like to show you how you could create other functions so maybe you don't want to put all your functionality in this one module exports function here so what you can do go down to the bottom and say var run me and let's make it a function so equals function and inside of it console log input and i want to point something out here this is normally what you do in node but since we are running in javascript in inside of the azure functions you want to actually use context.log. What we can do is pass it in as a parameter, just context, and then change console to context. And then I'm going to say run me receive. Actually, let's use ES6 uh, string interpolation. So let's do it this way with backticks. And then let's actually pass that context in to our run me when we call it. So here we're going to come up here and type run me context some value. If I click save and run, in the log, we're going to see that run me receives some value. So now you can see how you would break your functionality into several functions. But perhaps you want to actually have some sort of helper library where your functions live. So let's do that. So over here on the right, you can see view files. And then 
right here if you, and you click on manual trigger js1 hit the add button and i'm going to say library.js and then you need to press enter that way you get the file there and in here we're just going to do module.exports get environment variables and it's going to be a function that returns process.env and then we're going to go back to our index.js file and here at the top of the file we want to import do that just do const library equals require and if the dot slash it means local and it figures out the rest and then now i have access to anything that's in the exports for that library and so if i wanted to call it i just say var invars equals library dot get environment variables and then we can log it using uh, json.stringify now when i click save and run you can actually see this the azure portal is very touchy when you use your scrolling um, but you can see here that the environment variables are getting parsed out here if we want to see it easier um, which i do i don't like this i'm just going to give it a little bit more arguments to json stringify and then let me run it and scroll to the left to actually see the output and now you can see all the environment variables on this machine which is really cool uh, and it shows you what you have access to in your node environment inside of azure functions so if we wanted to print out computer name what we could just say is context.log you are running on a machine called using the envars hash in computer name and it's in this list down at the bottom you can see what else you have access to now if i print this to the screen or save and run this you are running on a machine called and there, and there you go so if you wanted to include a node package in your function how would you do that you would start by going up to the top and saying const underscore equals require lodash for example but if you notice in your files we don't have a node modules folder we don't have a lodash js file here either let me show you how you can include some pm packages in your your azure function so let me save this it's not gonna work because require lodash doesn't pull anything up but why don't i come over to go over to your function app settings down here and then click go to kudu and kudu is a code environment and it's like a web-based console onto your server go to site www root and then your function name and in here you have the three files actually and i can edit them in an editor delete them download them but down here is a console and i actually have access to type npm init because we want to create a package.json file and then once it's initting just answer the questions uh, just so we can create a package.json let me scroll down here so you can see the actual output and then we'll type in the name make sure you use all lowercase and then the defaults are all fine you don't have to take a lot of time here and then what it's going to do is create a package json file which you can see um, for some reason i lose access to the console here so i get it back by clicking use old console and then i say use new interactive console and i get my console back and then i have to navigate back to the folder just one of the hazards but kudu is great but you just have some quirkiness going on but now we want to install uh, Lodash. So I'm gonna do npm install Lodash, and I'm gonna say minus D, which means save it as a dependency, as a dev dependency. And once I do that, it's actually gonna update my package JSON file and install uh, Lodash inside of a node modules folder, which you see it doing. It seems to take about 30 seconds, so I'll speed it up for you here. Now I'm going back to my uh, function in the uh, second function app. And when I come over in here, you can see if I go to view files, you now have a node modules folder sitting here and it does have Lodash installed in it. So to use it, why don't we um, go down here and let's actually take an array of numbers because Lodash is very good at working with arrays and lists. And so we'll call it var numbers equals and we'll do one through six. And then we'll use Lodash to reverse it. We'll assign it to a variable called reversed. And then let's log it to the console. And while we're at it, why don't we uh, comment out context.log here, the big one. When we run save and run here, you'll see down at the bottom that it 
is successful. Your reverse array is 654321. So Lodash is working. Additional JavaScript libraries for your function to use. And then we added an NPM package for you to try out so you can see the power of Node and Azure functions. JavaScript is powerful and popular, but C-sharp is the real workhorse of the .NET framework.